بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I've been given the honor of sharing with you a brief biography of one of the greatest female companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم الصحابية أسماء بنت أبي بكر رضي الله عنها أسماء the daughter of Abu Bakr First off, let's get to know some of her family members to gain a true appreciation for her origins, the atmosphere in which she was raised, and those who influenced her in her life. She was, as I've already said, the daughter of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the close companion and devoted companion of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the first Khalifa, the first Khalifa of the rightly guided Khalifas after the Prophet's death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the older sister of a Sayyida Aisha, the mother of the believers, radiallahu anha. She was married to Az-Zubayr ibn al-Awwam, radiallahu anhu, the cousin of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and one of the ashar al-mubashirin bil jannah, one of the ten who were given glad tidings of jannah. Her mother-in-law was Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib, the the aunt, the great lady, the aunt of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And her brother-in-law, of course, was no other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. From a very young age, she formed a firm devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his service. It said she was among the first 20 people to accept Islam. Asma was someone who possessed many noble qualities. The first one I'll mention is her courage. There's one event for which Isma is especially famous for having taken part in, which displays this characteristic. And that is the Hijrah, the migration from Mecca to Medina. She was one of the few people who knew when it was time for the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr عنه, her father to leave Mecca. They had to leave secretly in the middle of the night. From Mecca, they went to the cave of Thor, and stayed there for three nights. The cave was three miles from Mecca. She would walk there every night by herself in the dark over the rough terrain, not knowing what kind of dangers uh, were surrounding her. She would climb up the, the rough hill and reach the cave to give Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her father food, water, and the latest news of what Quraysh was up to. By some accounts, she was pregnant in her third trimester at this time. Her nickname, that Nitaqain, which means the lady of two waist belts, was given to her by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after she tore her own waist belt into two to make it easier for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her father to carry the food on their journey. Asma also had to deal with the harassment of the Quraysh who kept coming to her house and aggressively interrogating her about the whereabouts of her father and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She even experienced physical harm at the hands of Abu Jahl who hit her so hard that she was bleeding from the blow. Despite all this, she remained firm in her silence and did not give them any information. Many years later, Asma would display her toughness and bravery again when she took part in the Battle of Yarmouk alongside her husband, son, and other Muslims. She helped the Muslim army drive the Roman army out of Syria. Soon after the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her father made the Hijrah, she also made the long and difficult journey to Medina. She made the journey in the last part of her pregnancy and gave birth to her son, Abdullah ibn Zubayr, soon after reaching Medina. His birth was a great source of joy and celebration for the Muslims, as he was the first baby born to them after the Hijrah. After having had a comfortable life in Mecca, she and her husband had to start over from nothing. But she worked hard, taking care of all her family's needs, and never complained content in the knowledge that they had done this for the sake of Allah, fi sabilillah, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not let their efforts and sacrifices go to waste. 
to fuel the steadfastness. Asma'at's prayers would sometimes be long. She would read lots of Quran and reflect upon certain ayahs by reciting them over and over. Asma, along with her sister Sayyid Aisha radiallahu anha, were known to be the two most generous women in Medina. Asma gave everything she had away. She encouraged her daughters to be that same way too. Asma was also known for her sharp mind, her eloquence and vast knowledge of the deen. She narrated 58 hadiths from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And many known narrators of hadith from the Sahaba and the Tabirun narrate from her. She was often consulted in matters of the deen by her sons and other students of knowledge at that time. What was Isma like as a mother? She was the mother of eight children, five boys and three girls. She had two very famous sons. They were famous for different things, but she raised them both to fulfill their potentials. Abdullah ibn Zubair became a prominent leader of the Muslims after the death of al Hussein radiallahu anhu at Karbala. Before going out to fight against the army of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he consulted his mother on his next move. Asma radiallahu anha told her beloved firstborn that death with honor is better than a life of peace with dishonor. Strengthened by her words and her never ending support, Abdullah. Ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu bravely went into battle against the army of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, which was commanded by Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. He fought till the death. When Hajjaj ibn Yusuf came to taunt Asma about her son's death, she addressed him firmly and without fear, telling him what she thought of him. Hajjaj did not know how to reply and left in silence. Asma herself oversaw the burial preparations for her son. Asma radiallahu anha also encouraged the talents of another one of her sons, Arwa ibn Zubair, who became one of the seven fuqaha or jurists of Medina. He was a prolific narrator of hadith, which he learned from his aunt, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, and was also a, a well-known historian. Aish, uh, Asma radiallahu anha lived to be a hundred years old. This is truly an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon her. And it's said that she had retained the sharpness of her mind until her very last day. She lived an exemplary life of service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was a loyal daughter, a dedicated wife, a murabiyah a mother who raised her children to fulfill their potential and to be strong servants of Allah. She was intelligent, a narrator of hadith and a scholar. She was a brave warrior and never shied away from speaking truth to power. Deeply devout and effusively generous. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us such honorable qualities and allow us to follow her example. والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته